nerds! Thank you for watching Generally Nerdy. This is your week in nerddom gaming edition for the week of June 11th, 2018. Uh, we're getting ready for Comic-Con, so this is gonna be a quick one, but let's hit the intro real quick either way. Quiet on the set, rolling. Hi, I am Bitsy Tellick. Hey, I'm Hale Appleman. And I'm Walter Kane. I'm Rene Auberginois. Odo on Deep Space Nine. Michael Dorn, Lieutenant Commander of War, Star Trek The Next Generation. Now come and see me and hear me and talk to me and listen to me and talk about myself. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, often considered generally nerdy, and you are listening to what is often considered generally nerdy. On Generally Nerdy. You're listening to Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Before we jump into the news, guys, we have to get into this week's sponsor. We got a new sponsor this week, not one that's really paying me yet, but it will. This one will. This one actually will, besides the t-shirts. Those pay me when you guys buy them. This week's sponsor has been brought to you by both Mercari and Poshmark. This is a very strange sponsor, you say. It's true, but uh, my girlfriend and I are selling a bunch of stuff trying to clear out our house because uh, she has collected clothes since she was probably 15 years old. So she has a lot of vintage stuff, I'm putting pictures up here, they're cycling through. Check them out. I'll leave a link to her Mercari and her Poshmark down in the description so you can go buy some of this vintage stuff. Any of you ladies out there, uh, we will be selling a couple of my things as well. So there will be guy stuff kind of nerdy stuff as you might imagine but again this episode is brought to you by both mercari and poshmark links in the description let's hit the news oh whoa, 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 whoa. before we get into the news also guys we have to do one more thing next week is denver com or this weekend rather is denver comic-con so next week we will not be doing the week in nerddom we will have how to con videos we will have adventures in photography we will have some cosplay stuff I'm gonna try and finish getting all of my interviews edited and posted from the last conventions that we were at. Uh, the Mushroom Head episode should be going up. All kinds of stuff will still be happening, just no week in nerddom. Okay, now let's get into the news. I'm taking a break from packing up for Comic-Con. Uh, I didn't do a call out for what to get on th this uh, Adventures in Photography video because I feel like I have a pretty good idea of what I'm shooting. Haven't gotten a whole lot of response pre-video uh, in the last two or three times I've, I've d done the call out. So until the community builds a little bit bigger, I'll kind of do those sporadically. But as, as we start growing, uh, I will definitely start doing call outs before each Adventures in Photography. Um, other things before we get into the news uh, yeah that was it <laughs> so uh, let's jump into the news of gaming and if you have been living under a rock then you don't know that this week was E3 that is why this video is coming out a day later than normal um, and yesterday was comics instead of gaming so we're gonna get to E3 but the first thing I want to touch on is actually Trogdor the tabletop game uh, they are doing a I think it's an Indiegogo campaign it might be Kickstarter but I'm pretty sure it's an Indiegogo campaign starts next month uh, it's going to be it looks like it's some sort of weird combination of like tabletop strategy and card game somehow so that's gonna be really interesting. It looks like it's a lot of fun. Link to the, whatever their crowdfunding page is. I'll figure it out by the time I get to the links and I'll post that down in the comments section or in the description rather. And yeah, I, I can't believe it took this long for them to branch out besides just a little bit of merch, but you know, whatever. So E3, let's talk about the gaming. Uh, I don't have my notes on me, though I did just kind of breeze over them before I came out here to take my break from packing. Um, this year was a little less than I hoped, and a big part of that, there was no Mortal Kombat announcement. We know it's coming, we just don't know how it's going to be announced. 
Boone's been dropping hints like crazy that that's the next game. And going by their uh, development cycle, that's the next game. So, I don't know. It, maybe... Maybe he's, he's really just trolling so hard and... Uh, it's not gonna end, there's like construction, so never mind the noise. But maybe he's just been trolling so hard and it's not gonna be the next game. Maybe they're coming out with another new IP so it's gonna change their development schedule a little bit. I don't know. Um, but that's not to say Mortal Kombat 11's not happening. I've seen a lot of, a lot of people doom saying, let's, let's, that, that's a good way to put it, doom saying on the interwebs saying that, oh, there's not even gonna be a Mortal Kombat 11. Yes, there is. NetherRealm, their freaking logo is a Mortal Kombat character. They're not gonna stop making Mortal Kombat games until they go out of business. Uh, so that's just a little ridiculous. But things that happened at E3 that were awesome. The demo for Anthem was pretty spectacular. I can't... Uh, I can't wait to try and play that game, though Lord knows A, I'm broke, and B, I have no internet, so maybe I will, maybe I won't. There's also uh, standouts in my head are the Smash Brothers reveal. That <laughs> looks so incredible. So they're, they're, uh, pardon me the, as the camera shakes, they're not introducing new characters, but... They, there is one new character, it's a, a Metroid character, and like they have so many different versions of all the characters that, yeah, they kind of did introduce some new stuff. Um, so I, that, that, that just, uh, it, I, I want a Switch so bad, <laughs> so bad. Okay, so I had to come in and get my uh, notes. Let me kill the AC because that sound is probably pretty annoying. Okay. Air conditioning off. So, I was I was having troubles outside. I was the distractions and I just couldn't remember all of my notes. So we came inside to, to, to go over the notes. Uh, Fallout 76, we're going to talk about that because I was super excited but then other things transpired during E3 that made me less excited. Um, Devil May Cry 5, that looks pretty awesome. Uh, it looks like your primary protagonist is going to be Virgil again. Uh, Dante, though, they did slip in right at the end. So that's, I don't know, I feel like that's gonna be one of the more fun games. And everything's coming out in 2019. Everything is coming out in 2019. Everything. 2019 is going to be a huge year for video games, I'm telling you right now. Uh, so, Kingdom Hearts 3, we knew it was coming, but we didn't know it was going to be an Xbox. I mean, we there was the leak that said uh, it was good. Oh, no, that was for Devil May Cry. So, ki the Kingdom, uh, Kingdom Hearts... <laughs> Kingdom Hearts was a bit of a surprise that it was going to be dual launching. So, that's awesome. Uh... Ger Geralt, I'm, I don't know if I'm saying the character's name right, the, the main character from Witcher, the main male protagonist from Witcher, uh, is going to be in Soul Calibur, that's pretty epic, I'm already super stoked about Soul Calibur, uh, interesting when they do those crossovers like they usually do with Soul Calibur, and what a perfect character for a crossover, uh, somebody from that kind of story which relies heavily on swordplay anyway, putting into... I mean, like, it's cool when they put spawn and stuff in, but it makes more sense when they put in uh, sword-centric characters. Like when they did Yoda and Vader. Those are because they use lightsabers, which are effectively swords, and the, the whole game is built around a sword, right? So that just makes the most sense to me. Uh, Halo Infinity, we're getting another Master Chief game. And no matter how many times... 343 Studios says they're they're not they're trying to move away from Master Chief. Eventually, we're going to get more Master Chief. Uh, Jump Force is another fighting game. I'm super stoked for that. I am a big fighting game aficionado, if you will. If, if I can ever get my internet situation taken care of, I'm going to start doing Let's Plays with fighting games because that's primarily all I have. <laughs> I mean, I've got, you know, Bioshock and Fallout and such, but 
that's a that's that's about as much as I deviate from the fighting game. Uh, so Jump Force looks pretty awesome, uh, though it's kind of not new territory, right? Because Dragon Ball Fighter Z already did that, but it's not the first time that two fighting games have vied for the same ground, right? So uh, Dying Light Two. The choice system in this game looks like it's going to be incredible. I am super excited about that. Uh, Battletoads. We got a real quick, real brief, super, super brief little thing for Battletoads coming in 2019. Uh, since Microsoft owns Rare, that's one of the titles that they somehow got to come over with them, even though most of their stuff stayed over at Nintendo. Uh... And we kind of knew this, we should have known this one was coming though, right? Because we got, uh, was it Zit, I believe? Maybe maybe it was Rash, or, or it could have been Pimple. One of the three of them uh, is in Killer Instinct. I haven't fired up my Killer Instinct uh, recently enough to remember which of the Battletoads was in it, but one of the Battletoads is in Killer Instinct. Uh, so, like, that's kind of, why would you do a crossover like that unless you're potentially going to be announcing something or you're going to be doing a project with that character just makes sense that they were going to do that so Battletoads super stoked for that hopefully they can do something to recapture what it what that original game was like not the arcade game I played that recently again and the arcade version of Battletoads was not nearly as fun as the regular the NES version of Battletoads so there's that uh, Gears Pop this is an interesting thing because if this is successful, if this does well, then we're going to see more pop games a la the Lego games. So I, I don't see this as a bad thing, It's but it's it's kind of, it has the potential of being indifferent. This could be uh, somebody trying to capitalize on Lego's uh, success because that happens apparently throughout Lego's history and if you don't know what I'm talking about watch toys uh, the toys that made us on Netflix it's a fantastic documentary series we talked about it actually when the first four episodes went up on Netflix we talked about this about a year ago we talked about it so check it out if you haven't all eight episodes are now up but this pop, this Gears Pop game, looks like they're kind of sort of capitalizing on the Lego games, right? Because it's it's kids' fair and it's super bright and polished and shiny and uh, I, I it, it could be fantastic. It could be something very different. But it looks like they're starting without voices and they're starting uh, just. Uh, it'll be interesting. I'm I'm really excited to see what happens with it. Uh, we talked about Smash Brothers. Square, Enix, uh, Enix, whatever, their presentation was really super lackluster. Sony's was kind of as well, but we knew it was going to be. According to their social media uh, leading up to the event, they, they told us it was going to be low-key. That's exactly what it was, so we shouldn't have been surprised. Uh, and Ubisoft was kind of lackluster too. The only one that I was super excited for was Nintendo, and that was only because of uh, Smash Brothers. And then Microsoft had a huge, huge uh, situation. And then Bethesda probably had the best. So, uh, the last thing I, I, that was really cool that we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on was Cyberpunk. We still have no release date for it, but we got what looks like some in-game engine stuff probably not but potentially that could have been in-game engine uh, doing those the the, 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 the the preview or whatever so that's really cool we got a little bit of a taste of what the story is going to look like and what the character design is and all that jazz we've been getting a little bit of that stuff ever since it was announced but now we actually have hard like visible moving evidence of what the story and character design are so that's really awesome uh, so let's talk Bethesda real quick uh, their their presentation their e3 presentation overall was amazing was so cool uh, could have probably done without Andrew WK because I'm not a huge fan of his music but I don't know it kind of set the stage and and the Rage demo that they were playing over was interesting, and 
It's appropriate because Andrew WK is on the Rage soundtrack, uh, I believe, the original Ra Rage soundtrack, as well as, uh, I, I believe he voices one of the characters on the original Rage, so it's got that going for it. Let me lighten this up real quick. Um, so that was cool. And then the Elder Scrolls, the mobile thing, I, I forget exactly what it was called because I didn't write it down, but... Uh, I could look it up, I guess. I just don't care that much. It was cool. I'm likely not going to play it just because I don't have the money or the time to devote into more Elder Scrolls. Uh, I did that with, uh, which one was it? Morrowind, I believe. And, yeah, that if I plan on playing Fallout, there ain't no way I can play both. I'm just saying. So, but that was, it was really cool. I really dug how they're going to make it cross-platform and your game will pick up if you start playing on mobile and then you get home and play on your console the game will pick up where you left off on mobile and so on and so forth so the interactions there look super super awesome so I'm excited for the potential of what that could mean for their other franchises there um, specifically Fallout and so let's get into Fallout Fallout 76 he made it sound like in the presentation that there you were going to be able to play it without an internet connection. And as I state numerous times in these videos, I, my my net connection sucks. Oftentimes I can't even get online to update my console, so I'm probably two updates behind uh, everybody else who has an Xbox. Um, so I usually have to rely on a game that has good single player re uh, single player replay value, Tr and and that doesn't that's not so difficult when you play when you only play Fallout and and big RPGs like that and fighting games you can play through. There's there's a pretty good replay value because you've got multiple characters to play through as, so those are always really good. And Halo generally has a decent story. Uh, to play through and and things like that Bioshock obviously and, and and again things of that nature So I was super excited and all of the really awesome things that he said after that I was like sweet. This is gonna be awesome and then He clarified uh, the next day or so uh, in a different stream that you are going to have to be online because there's no NPC characters. There's non-player control characters uh, do not exist in this world. They, everyone that you run into in the world of Fallout, unless it's like a super mutant or something that's not human, is going to be controlled by another human on the other on the other end. So you're going to have to play online. Apparently, down the road. There is, uh, there is going to be an update where you can play by yourself, not online. I forget exactly what they call that. Um, just that just uh, make me so sad. <laughs> um, I, I hope uh, this is this is very likely the reason why they didn't call this Fallout Five. Because this is them testing the waters with a new, with some new gameplay. Uh, the graphical engine is, or the the basic gameplay engine has not been changed. We're still playing basically the same gameplay engine as Fallout 3, just with some graph graphical upgrades. Um, and and this this even looks better than Fallout 4 did, but still obviously going to be the same kind of bugs that we've been getting since Fallout 3. So that's again a, a clue, a sign that this is not Fallout 5. Also, they announced Elder Scrolls, what was it, 6? Uh, which is going to be a next-gen game, so they've already started developing for the next-gen. So us speculating on the PlayStation 5 seems to not be too far off base because if we already have developers developing for a console that is still hypothetical, that's a little crazy. So if there's a console in the works, that means they have an idea of what the specifications are going to be. That means they, they're they working on artwork and they're working on a new game engine feasibly for Elder Scrolls, which also means they're likely going to be starting that same work on Fallout, probably not this year because they're going to be focusing on 76, 
very likely not next year, though it is possible. Uh, but in 2020 is probably when we're going to be seeing new Fallout stuff. And that means we're likely to be seeing a new console sometime in the next year and a half as well. So, again, I, I would not be surprised if Sony announces... Uh, next summer that the new PlayStations will be rolling out next year for E3. That's I, entirely possible in my head. But I am not an industry in insider, so I have n absolutely nothing to back up that conjecture. So we'll just have to wait and see. But that's all we're talking about this week for gaming, guys. If you want to continue the conversation about the, the E3 stuff, about Trogdor, anything at all that we talked about on this episode, then please, let's have that conversation down low in those comments. And what did I miss? What should we talk about next week? Let me know in the comments down low. There's a website, generallynerdy.net. There's a Patreon, patreon.com slash generallynerdy. There's all kinds of stuff that you can check out on both of those things, so go do that. If you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button. If you like the episode, like button, you know, all that jazz, though. But before we click likes and subscribes and go to websites or whatever, always, guys, always remember, if it's generally nerdy, it's probably here. <laughs>